don't just blindly save any user input. Even relatively inexperienced users who know a bit about web development who don't consider themselves hackers like to mess with other developers, just to test out the security of the apps they're using and see if they can insert something malicious into them. One thing that's often forgotten about is cleaning up user input by removing unwanted HTML so that malicious users can't inject script tags into the content of your app, which would then regurgitate them to other unsuspecting users later on. If you allow this kind of content to be added into your app's database, then you'll soon find your legitimate user users being redirected to dodgy sites, having their personal information stolen, and at the very least having a bad experience with your otherwise carefully crafted app that you've spent months developing. So in this video we're going to take a look at how you can safely remove or sanitize HTML content from your user input. There are several different ways to completely remove HTML content from user input which will keep your app safe, but of course there might be times when you want to keep some HTML that the user has provided. Formatting tags like strong, bold and emphasis, for example, would be really useful to hold on to if your app provides a text editor that users can create content in. We'll take a look at how to control what HTML a user can enter into your app shortly, but first let's take a look at a way to sanitize HTML that you should definitely not use. Take a look at this code which will remove HTML from a string. You may have even come across this if you googled something along the lines of the title of this video before. And if you're not sure how this works, the text content property of the element will not actually render the HTML in the string provided to it, it will keep the actual text in the string, which is why this function is 100% effective at removing HTML content. What this function is not 100% effective at doing is stopping the user from bypassing this code on the front end of your web app and just sending a string with HTML content directly to your back end API or service. You'll notice that the function requires the document object, which can't be easily replicated within the back end of your app. In other words, this code is intended to work on the front end, but a user with even a small amount of knowledge can get around this. So we can't use this code, and if you already have it somewhere in your app, please replace it with one of the options we're about to look at. Please do it. Let's take a look at one approach to removing HTML elements from user input. PHP has obviously been around for a lot longer than some other server-side languages, so it's been engineered to cope with security problems like this, and so it has a built-in function for removing HTML content from a string, the strip tags function. It's dead easy to use, just call the function with the string you want to clean up, and the output is the text of the string without any HTML markup. If you're using Node.js, then there is a replication of the PHP strip tags function, which you can use by installing the strip tags npm package. Simply do an npm install inside your project, and then you can call it in pretty much the same way that we just did with the PHP version. Pass in the string you want to clean, and then the output you get is the text, no markup. So this is great for getting rid of all the markup in a string, but what about if you want to control or limit what HTML content is allowed to be used in your web app? As mentioned before, you might want to allow the user to format some content they are adding to your app, like with a rich text editor. This isn't a problem with the two approaches we've just looked at with strip tags. You simply provide an array of HTML elements that are allowed in the string as the second argument, and this works in both the PHP and Node versions. So now that we've stripped the script HTML tags from our user input and inserted the string into our app's database, we can sleep easily at night, right? Well, if you're being really restrictive in what HTML content you're allowing the user to submit, then your app will be safe, but you should be cautious with some elements. For example, if you do allow users to use the image elements with HTML content they're providing, then there's a possibility they could trigger their own JavaScript from the on error attribute. Unfortunately, the strip tags functions can remove any HTML elements, but they can't allow or disallow specific attributes. Luckily, if you're using Node, there's a different package that you can use to get full control of what gets removed or preserved in the user's HTML content. And that package is the Sanitize HTML package. Let's take a quick look to see how you can use it to clean up user input. With the Sanitize HTML package installed, you can use it in a very similar way to the strip tags function we've already seen. However, the power of this package is when we want to finally control what we want to accept as HTML from the user. We can provide an object as the second parameter to the function, which has properties to control the cleaning of the HTML. And first off is the allowed tags property, which is just an array of strings to allow certain HTML elements. Then we can control the attributes that the, these tags can contain with the allowed attributes property. So we can exclude those pesky on error attributes from image tags, for example. And there are a few other options for controlling things like self-closing tags and different types of HTTP schemes. 
And the sanitize HTML package sets some pretty useful defaults, so if you stick with those, you won't need to do a lot of customization to clean up the user's HTML input. There is one further problem with accepting user input. Users won't just be supplying a string of HTML when your app is updating or saving something. It's more likely they'll be providing a bunch of other data too, like their user ID, the reference to the document or the thing that they're trying to update, as well as the content that they actually want to save. So you'll need to ensure you validate all the different bits of information that's being sent to your backend API or service. And a great way to do this is with schema validation. So make sure you check out this next video to see how you can create an API that accepts the type and amount of data that your app really needs.